In this video, I'll show you how to get the most from Komoot. I'm not sponsored by them, and this is not an official video in any way. There are three main things you'll probably want to do with a cycle routing app, and I'll structure this video around them. They are plan a ride where you pick the route, maybe you know it well and want to share it with someone, you download a route someone else has planned and posted, or plan a ride allowing the app to pick the route, probably in an area you don't know. In each case, especially the last two, there's a crucial step at the end to check the route. Do not miss that. This is where I live in the West Highlands of Scotland. A group of locals are planning their first big ride around the peninsula's roads, and I'd like everyone to have a GPS file of our route, so I'm planning it on Komoot using the road cycling option. Even though it's a round trip, Komoot works better if you start off telling it you want a one-way ride. Start clicking new endpoints to that ride along the route you want to travel. Make small jumps rather than large ones. When you get to just over halfway, switch from one-way ride to round trip, and Komoot does the rest. Save the ride so it's stored on Komoot servers and now it is also accessible and editable from your phone and can be shared from it or desktop. Now that is a simple road ride, but if planning an off-road ride, it's a little more complicated. Again, starting in the village, I'll ride around the coast road to here, but then take my gravel or mountain bike up this glen to the point where the trail on the map comes to an end. I know there's no track through this glen, but I can tell Komoot not to follow ways by taking the tick off this little box. I know it's going to be a long carry, but I can work my way through the ground using the GPS just to keep me in roughly the right direction. When I hit the track at the other end, I can put the tick back in its place and can once again follow known ways, switch to round trip and Komoot will complete the planning. So that's on and off road when I know where I'm going. But what if I'm going somewhere new and would like someone else to suggest a ride that they've done? This comes under the Discover option. These can be rides other people have done, or they can come from Komoot's own algorithm based on recommendations. Choose the sort of riding you want to do. Gravel is not yet in these options, and the gravel routing isn't yet very good, so go with mountain biking. And I'm going to visit Inverness, starting at the train station. I could select length and ride difficulty, but haven't. This is good, but it's 10 miles from the station, so I want closer. So I'll shrink the radius and browse. This looks good, so I can look at the highlights, look at the map in more detail, and crucially the surface types. There's a tiny bit of state road, that's trunk road in the UK. So let's see how much. Hover over that yellow bit, and it's highlighted in white on the map. I can zoom in for a closer look. Touch the M key on your keyboard, and the blue line is temporarily removed so you can see what's underneath. That looks fine. Shrink the view, I hit save and it goes into my planned routes. That will also show up on my phone. If I want to change the start point, I use the option to replan the route and select starting point. This is a new copy of the route. Say I want to start in this car park. I'll select that and Komoot will just replot around it. Again, save it with a different name because it's a copy and it'll be on my desktop and phone. Now, you really must check their route. I didn't do this with one in Northumberland, and look where I ended up. But Komoot has this as a cycle lane, because I'm damn certain that that is not a cyclable road. And, uh, well, can you see a cycle lane? No, I can't either. I'm gonna have to reroute this. I'll show you exactly how to check your route after we cover the third type of route planning. I recently asked Komoot to plan a route on the south coast of England. My titanium gravel bike had 35mm tyres and I wanted to avoid busy roads, preferring off-road or ideally rough tracks and cycleways. This is one of Komoot's strongest features. You plan the route depending on your bike. Komoot reads the data about surface type from OpenStreetMap. That's a mapping version of Wikipedia that anyone can edit. 
In practice, that means you can pick one of these buttons depending upon the type of bike you're riding. I was on Hailing Island, aiming to get over to Poole in Dorset. This is how the road bike route looks. It's a bit busy through the centre of Southampton. On a touring bike, it looks like this. The touring bike route takes in an extra ferry and goes through the heart of the New Forest, so that's nice. The gravel route is pretty much the same. But the mountain bike route goes onto the Isle of Wight, and that looks rather exciting. So that is what I did. A little trick is to click the selected bike twice, then all possible routes show up, including hiking. And you then take your pick. You don't even have to stick to that route. You can tweak it as you go. But now we're at the stage where I check my route. This is a stage I've been banging on about since the start. A few years ago, I allowed Kamut to plan a ride from Richmond to Poole in Dorset, which was fine, until suddenly it wasn't. This is the main A35 and it's routed me down here as a touring cyclist. Now I've just looked on the map and there are at least two other routes it could have taken for only slight diversions. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm actually going to try and leave the commute route soon and get away from this. But things change. In 2019, Kamut actively updated its algorithm in the UK and in Italy, favoring B roads over A roads to help keep cyclists away from busier traffic. However, in my experience, their gravel routing option isn't yet working as well as it could. Touring and MTB seem better for gravel bikes. But the key to keeping safe is to check the route in advance. Busy roads are usually these yellow ones, the state roads I mentioned before. Hover over the yellow and all those sections show up white. The same works with cycleways or any other road type. This way you spot any long white sections of trunk road and can plan to avoid them. What's more, if you click on the section, there's now a tiny icon which, when you click on it, opens up Google Street View. You can see exactly what a section looks like before you risk riding it. My second check is to scroll up a bit further and check for sections where you can't cycle to make sure they're not very long. These are fine. Also check for ferries. If you find one, check it will run when you need it to or reroute and avoid it. People get caught out with this all the time near us. If you do want to reroute away from Kamut's suggestion, then I find it's worth going down a layer to the open cycle map. Here you can see all the national and local cycle routes and work out in detail the surface types you'll ride on. I always check my route on open street map and open cycle map because these are the base maps on which all the popular routing apps work. Oh, sorry. You've heard me speak about OpenStreet and OpenCycle Map, which you can edit if you wish. The mapping apps, including Strava, Ride with GPS, use these for their base data. But what if that's wrong? Well, that's where you and me come in. If we each get a login and correct the mistakes in our local areas, then the mapping apps get better. There's no use complaining they're wrong when we have the means to fix them. And if you'd like to do that, check out this video right now. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, have a look around the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.